Well, hello and welcome everyone to the 2020 Hackaday Prize Award Ceremony. My name is Mike Stish. I'm editor in chief of Hackaday. My name is Magenta Strongheart. I'm head of design and partnerships at Supply Frames Design Lab. We're very excited to have you all here with us today to celebrate the 2020 Hackaday Prize Award announcements. The Hackaday Prize is our global engineering initiative where we encourage designers, engineers, makers, hackers, everyone that's part of the incredible open source hardware community to uh, develop solutions for some of humanity's toughest challenges. And we really pushed that to new levels, I think, this year through our partnerships with our nonprofits. You know, we started planning this prize and, and the structure of this prize uh, soon after the award ceremony last year and didn't know uh, what, what a year it would be when we, when we launched. And um, something I feel that has just stayed constant throughout, um, you know, in, ha in Hackaday Prize past, this is the seventh year we're doing this now and, and we'll continue through the Hackaday and open source hardware community into the future is really just bringing our skills and talents um, together through innovative collaboration to help each other out and really make an impact and, and be the change we want to see in this world. So I really just want to say kudos to the community, to you all, um, for continuing to encourage and push each other and inspire each other through Hackaday IO and through the prize each year to um, put your best foot forward and, and create solutions for, for others. So thank you all. And we're really excited to, to get to uh, today's announcements. So of course, there's a lot that goes into putting on a contest like the Hackaday Prize. And in addition to that, we're really excited to have the large prizes that we're handing out tonight, yeah. plus all of the prizes that have gone out throughout the contest. And in order to do that, we need strong sponsors and strong partners. And right up there is DigiKey Electronics, who's been with us since the very beginning of the Hackaday Prize year after year after year, they've come back and said, this is important to us. And so I want to say a huge thank you to the exclusive distributor sponsor this year, DigiKey. Our visionary sponsors are also key in making all of this happen. The strong support from Supply Frame, who founded the Hackaday Prize and have been there every year to make sure that it shines, but also with our sponsor partners, Microchip and Arm, that go into making sure that we have everything that we need to support this wonderful community. Thank you, Microchip, Supply Frame, and Arm. And this year we have sort of a new group of contributors to thank. Um, we want to uh, give a huge shout out to CommerceNet and Composite Ventures for matching um, Supply Frame in donations to our nonprofit partners. Um, it really allowed us to, uh, to have new partners this year and be able to support them while they, de while they dedicated so much of their already strapped time and resources to our initiative. So thank you to CommerceNet and Composite Ventures for their, their generous uh, donations this year. And that brings us to our, non our nonprofit partners. So many of you know by this, by this point a little bit about each of these organizations um, because you created incredible projects for them, um, but we just wanna run through briefly the, the work that they're doing and, and remind you all that these organizations were doing this work um, to great lengths you know, before this year and will continue to um, uh, value the support of the open source community after the prize um, comes to its finale. So Conservation X Labs does uh, environmental conservation work and uh, wildlife protection initiatives. Uh, UCPLA is United Cerebral Palsy Los Angeles. They work to provide um, opportunities for the cerebral palsy community, especially in engaging ways to um, allow for accessibility and creative expression. Field Ready uh, helps to uh, tackle the challenge of sort of supply chain in crisis relief and humanitarian aid situations um, by employing the tools that many, many of our community are familiar with, uh, digital fabrication tools and whatnot in the field um, so that their supply chain is not reliant on um, any sort of inaccessible uh, channels. And last but not least, Cal Earth has developed uh, their super Adobe technology in order to build um, affordable housing very quickly um, again, in, in 
humanitarian aid and crisis relief um, environments. So thank you to the incredible nonprofit partners for the work you all do and for, um, for engaging with us in this initiative this year, not only dedicating your time and, and expertise, but really coming with enthusiasm to each meeting and each call and, and each um, event that we uh, asked you to be involved with this year. So huge thank you to them. Of course, we started with hundreds of entries back in the spring, and it's wonderful to be joined by so many of the finalists. Tonight, we're celebrating 34 finalists for the Hackaday Prize. The important thing to know is that these projects obviously don't stop just because we're giving out prizes this evening. Uh, they're born of great ideas. They were developed in the open and with a lot of input and encouragement from the people throughout the community. Uh, I wanted to say that you can find a full list of these finalists over on hackaday.io. Uh, you could dive into the details of each of these projects. And I encourage you go and congratulate them. Go and send your kudos, maybe offer your help. These, this kind of interaction and these questions and this offers for help are what helps carry the work forward so that we can see the projects become even greater than they already are. And then of course we need to um, acknowledge the um, wonderful judges and more mentors that we had uh, involved this year, some returning and some new faces. Uh, it's one of my favorite parts of my job each year to get to engage with these individuals and, and recruit new um, members to the community. And um, unfortunately, again, we're not able to, uh, to go through each of these people individually and, and all of their accomplishments and, and accolades, but I know um, each of them are highly respected in their fields and whether it's the nonprofit sector or audio engineering or open source um, conservation technology, they have dedicated years of their lives to the same type of work that we are um, honoring today. And we really appreciate them dedicating um, uh, their time to our initiative and supporting, uh, supporting our community through calls and again, through their time helping select finalists, which is one of the toughest jobs um, about the prize, which I, I don't envy that challenge. Um, so thank you so much to all of our judges and mentors again. And again, please check out their full bios on prize supplyframe.com to learn more about about each of them. All right. So first up, we're going to talk about the wildcard award. Our nonprofit partners this year uh, outlined open challenges, like specific things that they were working for. But of course, there's a lot of room to make good in the world. And the wildcard is uh, for those entries that didn't quite fit into the open challenges, but were still worthwhile and very interesting. It's an amazing project. You should definitely check it out. And we're so excited that the best wildcard prize and $5,000 goes to PolySense. So what I really love about this project is how it's uh, um, taking a technology that was recently patented, uh, reverse engineers, and really expands its creative potential. And they're really good with documentation showing all the great things that you could do with that technology that really opens up a whole field and, and interfaces. Just the fact that they put it in such simple terms and have reverse engineered how to make it is still incredibly powerful. PolySense is definitely a game changer for the e-textile community. Thank you so much. I really was not expecting anything. I just came to see what you all guys have been working on. And I really, yeah, it's super good. <laughs> uh, yeah, basically they summarized really well the idea. I don't know if I should go much further. We. I've been I've been making musical interfaces for a while and there was this sensing part that was super expensive and hard to find. And then there's some company that decided to stop selling it. So we just reverse engineered it with a manu um, material scientist. And we found a super simple process to make our custom sensors from anything porous like uh, textile, paper, cardboard, feathers. And we just published, I think four or five uh, academic papers out of it. Like it was, I'm not even an academic originally, but it just happened. <laughs> and yeah, I'm, I'm really glad that this thing became open, open because the, yeah, the open source um, the textile community was really blocked by this thing. Yeah. But, so I think that's really, yeah, really, really glad to see that it's interesting for other people. Thank you, Cedric, and congratulations. The Cal Earth uh, challenges were based around developing modular add-ons for, again, that super Adobe um, 
technology and the structures that Cal Earth organization builds. Our honorable mention for Cal Earth um, and the winner of $3,000 is Win DIY. The most exciting thing for me about this entry was the focus on allowing the blades of the turbine to adjust pitch in order to do two things, to take advantage of all of the wind that was coming in the different angles of the wind, but also to account for damaging winds so that you can actually change the pitch uh, so that hopefully the machine is not damaged as much as it would be. But on top of that, the creator thought about redundancy for this situation. So not only can the blades change their pitch, uh, they're also modular and easily replaceable anyway. Yeah, thank you, of course. Uh, thank you very much for this uh, awesome prize that is really like uh, some kind of crown, I think, in the nerd universe, <laughs> from my point of view at least. And um, yeah, I not only want to thank you for this prize, but also for these, this kind of stage we get here, not only on this, uh, on this ceremony, but also on Hackaday, like every day with awesome projects over everywhere on the world. And uh, for me, this is important because I remember that at the beginning of the year when it started with Corona and we had the first uh, Corona lockdown here in Germany, I started with working on this and publishing this some more because I was, yeah, some kind of bored, sorry to say it this way. And to see now that so many people really appreciate uh, what I'm doing, what I did there and what I still will be do, will, will doing there, that, that is really, really cool for me. And um, one other thing I want to mention is that I hope that this kind of stage also gives some more additional awareness on this topic of climate change, because I think this is a very, very important topic that we see all around the world. And I also hope that I can contribute to um, this topic or to, to solutions against the climate change with Windy a bit, because from my point of view, or what, what I also hear from opinions of others, that it everyone is clear with we have to do something against uh, the climate change but it's uh, often difficult how to start on the own personal way because what can one human do against it and my final goal really with this uh, windy wind turbine would be that uh, it is one of the options that everyone could um, yeah use to do something against the climate change and this would be a really, really cool thing if there are someday in a far future, much more, many, many more windies or other wind turbines, of course, on the world. Yeah, thank you very much. It's really, really cool. I really appreciate that. Thanks. Congratulations. And thank you again for, for participating this year. And congrats on the win. We're excited to see you um, continue to work on this. And like you said, see where the community takes it. Yeah, I will. I promise. Thanks. All right. Thank you. We have the best Cal Earth award and the winner of $10,000, another turbine, but this one is fully 3D printable. Let's hear about Propel E450. And this finalist was so obviously uh, geared toward community and making this project a community project. I mean, their video was in a maker space and they thought about how can this design be made with basic printers, basic 3D printers that um, are the most available? This project's use of modularity was also a really interesting way to make the design more accessible. Yeah, I don't know what to say. Um, this uh, kind of reward uh, renders me uh, speechless. Uh, it's a big honor to receive this prize for sure. Um, yeah, it's uh, actually the first competition um, <laughs> we took place in, so it's really great uh, to win it um, and to uh, to have uh, recognition for uh, all our hard work. Um, yeah, yeah. Me personally, I spent uh, 50, 60 hours a week uh, working on it uh, for months, so uh, I'm really happy that uh, recognition is there. Um, and the good news is... Um, if you are not waiting for this prize to uh, start a company, 
and uh, at this uh, very moment, actually, uh, the last uh, few days, we have been uh, working very hard to uh, to launch uh, the company uh, officially. Um, it will be in, uh, in Belgium, um, but who knows after that uh, what can happen. Um, we are also uh, exchanging knowledge with the uh, University of uh, Germany and the uh, University of Greece. Um, that there, uh, I have a lot of uh, knowledge on um, um, the aerodynamics of the blades. They are also uh, looking into the printing of, uh, of blades for uh, small wind turbines. Um, so uh, we have also some uh, other outlooks that are looking good like uh, opening of uh, test sites in Spain, something that we are uh, preparing, thanking uh, once again for this, uh, um, yeah, for the for the price and for the uh, recognition. Um, so part of Field Ready's mission is to help fill critical gaps in available infrastructure and areas that are recovering from disaster. And uh, part of this includes, you know, getting basic medical coverage uh, available in the area. And so this project directly addresses one of Field Ready's open challenges, which was to build an IV fluid warmer. Um, and this is built using hot plates and a looping path for the IV tubing uh, that goes through it and an electronic control system. And it has become an affordable solution that could be managed, that could be manufactured on the scene. The Field Ready Honorable Mention and $3,000 this year goes to Open Fluid Warmer. This was a really nice project. Uh, I really liked how all the requirements and the hazards and uh, all of the interactions of this were really well thought out. I know how important that is to Field Ready and it's done really well here. Um, it's hard to do that. Um, so this, like like some of the best entries, uh, uh, some of the best finalists in the Hackaday Prize this year, um, is something that there's real clear need for. So having an open source alternative to that is really important. Yeah, I don't know. Thank you very much. This is this is awesome. Like, uh, you know, I, I really enjoyed this opportunity to to work with some of the mentors and um, to feel ready, like Kat Hebson and. Um, I think Christine Sunu and, and, and Magenta every time for those mentor sessions. I really got a lot out of that for this competition. And this is just being able to get a little bit more money to, to find the next stage for this project is, is just really exciting for me. Um, right, what you saw in the video is the, the first generation of the open fluid warmer. And, and since then, and I think since the prize closed, I've, I've developed a second generation um, so I'm really excited about seeing where this can go. I've got more ideas to add additional features at uh, fairly low cost and um, trying to find a um, customer or someone interested in being able to evaluate this from a medical perspective. So I think there's so much potential for this idea and similar ideas um, surrounding open source medical devices going forward and thank you very much for the recognition from this Hackaday Prize. So John just mentioned it and I wanna join him in, in saying thank you to judges and mentors. And a lot of them are on this call and you're seeing them on these videos. And this is not a small amount of time that they've committed to the Hackaday Prize this year, but it's a hugely important part of it. And so thank you again to all the, the judges and, and moderators. I'm excited for the uh, Field Ready Best Prize. And um, another part of their mission is uh, to provide manufacturing tools and techniques uh, for on the ground use in disaster recovery areas. And this project developed a high powered handheld UV wand. It's designed for uh, curing adhesives in seconds or, or minutes where um, you need them for manufacturing or repair and you just don't have time to sit and watch the glue dry. The Field Ready Best Prize of $10,000 goes to the UVA project. Super cool project. It's really polished. It's really well thought out. But the winner for me was the documentation. Uh, so we all know how hard this is to do well. And this project does it really well. Um, uh, really laid out everything out that you would need and laid it out in a way that showed that they had paid attention to how Field Ready does its documentation. Yeah, this project did a lot of good work with design. 
they really considered, I think design user experience UI is very important for anything that you need to carry as a, as a person. So I think this is also pretty ready for production. <laughs> uh, um, well, uh, thank you. This is quite a nice surprise. Uh, my friend Miguel and I worked really hard on this project for a very long time, and we are very happy to see this well received. Um, when we started, uh, we thought it might be a fun experience to try tackling one of these open challenges. And uh, when we took on the UV11 and did some research, we noticed that uh, Field Ready is right. Uh, industrial power UV flashlights are really expensive. So, you know, it, we thought it would be interesting to tackle the project of uh, doing our best engineering and design effort into making a very simple uh, UV1. Well, trying to keep the spirit of the way Field Ready works, where they put a lot of effort in how they document everything and making sure everything is safe, making sure everything is easy to use for the, for the final user. And we are very happy. I hope they can find good use for our work. And of course, thank you at every, everyone at Hackaday for making this uh, contest possible. Next up, we have uh, Conservation X Labs challenges. The Conservation X Labs uh, honorable mention award for $3,000 goes to WaterAid, a smart aquatic monitoring system and platform that'll allow for research and data to continue to be collected um, in, in a more um, sophisticated way and, and is entirely open source, of course. When I read the documentation and I looked at all of the build files and, and the photographs were done well too, I also really appreciated the two modes that they designed, which was the personal mode, where you could walk around and gather on samples from different bodies of water or from different locations in one body of water. And then the enterprise mode, which is where you can just have it sit in one place for, for a long period of time and stream data that way. I was honestly not expecting this. I'm very happy. Oh, thanks so much. Uh, this really does mean a lot for me. I um, I started off with a vision, I guess, to kind of have an impact on um, what we call climate change these days. And it's such a prominent topic that I kind of wanted to help out the community. And I actually had a previous version of this project online and um, a member of the Hackaday team reached out to me informed me about the contest and honestly I was very excited about it so I reiterated the whole project um, improved sensor accuracy improved um, the differentiation between the two modes enterprise and personal mode allowing both um, the device to be used on a mass scale where necessary and as a single device that can be carried around providing maximum flexibility and um, yeah so uh, the project turned out kind of nice if, sorry, um, my brother just entered the room. Um, the project um, ended up kind of nice. In my opinion, I um, created a dashboard where the user can visualize or the authorities can visualize the data that the device or device is collected and um, just basically um, <laughs> see how water pollution is in certain bodies of water. It can be used both, let's say, in um, a river, an ocean, wherever uh, need be to detect pollution levels and then take appropriate action on that. And that's pretty much the project. I think it was summed up very well in the video. Thank you so much again for um, everything. So another aspect of of the Conservation Ice Labs challenge brief was really trying to tackle this issue of invasive, in, uh, invasive species and, and the impact they can have on um, environments and, and communities. And we're excited to announce that the winner of Best uh, Conservation X Labs Award and $10,000 is Solar Scare Mosquito 2.0. One of the things that was so exciting about this project is it was interesting to see a design evolve on Hackaday. They were thinking about where mosquitoes are the most challenging for large groups of people and trying to design a solution for that situation. 
Okay, so yeah, this is super exciting. <laughs> and uh, we have my teammate Ashish on the Zoom also. And we were secretly hoping to win this because in fact, uh, just a couple of weeks back, we launched our startup around this project and we needed just some funds to make the next iteration and make the product more manufacturable. And I think this is going to do it and it's a great help so thank you so much for that. And I would also like to share a quick anecdote, like as mentioned in the video. So we had done this project in 2014 on Instructables and it was picked up by Hackaday. And the next thing we know, it's picked up by Wired magazine and then Bill Gates tweeted about the project. So that blew our mind and it's thanks to Hackaday, which like you guys picked it up first. So I'm really grateful. and. You guys have been like instrumental to my journey, to our journey as innovators. So thank you so much for like uh, building and nurturing this community of geeks and game changers. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, awesome. Um, well, awesome. Well, congrats firstly to both the teams and um, just quickly, you know, Conservation X Labs, we're really trying to end the six mass extension, preserve biodiversity. Um, but what we really do is uh, focus on the underlying drivers that cause that. And so I think both of these solutions did an awesome job of really enabling the, the tools that help us uh, address these issues. Um, as a hardware engineer myself, I'm so excited that Conservation X Labs was part of this this year and, and uh, this whole prize has been fantastic. Um, the water, water monitoring, uh, you know, remains inaccessible to, to many, both because of the cost and the ease of use. I think this project, um, WaterAid, did a fantastic job of addressing that. And I think particularly also, you know, one of the things that I really noted was the dashboard because, you know, the data is only useful if it's actionable. And I think this really makes it more, uh, more accessible to a lot more people and makes that data a lot more uh, uh, promising in terms of changing things in the environment. Just very quickly, um, solar scare mosquito. <laughs> I was really, really excited to see this. Um, you know, not only does it protect, you know, the, the, and and serve the safety of the people in, you know, some of the most biodiverse areas of the world where where these diseases are so common, uh, but it also serves serves the model for how connected devices could be used to surveil natural areas for invasive species and also monitor for the next disease outbreak. We're seeing this right now, obviously, with with the global pandemic. Um, this is called One Health, and this is something that CXL is extremely excited about. And so uh, really, really awesome to see these projects come through. Uh, and, and once again, thank you to Hackaday uh, for putting on this prize and hoping to uh, continue to work with everyone uh, on this call uh, into the future. So we have our, um, our final nonprofit uh, awards coming up here with the United Cerebral Palsy Los Angeles. And we are so lucky to have many of the UCPLA team members here on this call. And specifically, we have JJ Levenstein, the chair of the board of directors for UCPLA to uh, help us present uh, the next two awards. So I'm very pleased um, on behalf of our community of variably abled folks to um, congratulate Hackaday for um, fostering and furthering independence in the people that we serve who are so special to us. So I'm very happy to um, announce the honorable mention award. It goes to the Magpie MIDI. It's an adaptive MIDI interface harmonica. I absolutely loved this design and the sip and puff um, uh, capability of it, you know, not only allow someone to be creative, uh, but also independent in terms of navigating their way through their day, navigating their communication and it's, uh, there are so many people that are going to benefit from um, your invention and uh, the fact that you can make it affordably is uh, even better because most of our families don't have um, unlimited resources. And so this is really just such a, a gift to our community. Thank you so much again. Well, first of all, thank you everybody very much. Uh, we are really, really excited to hear this wonderful news. My team and I are deeply, my team partner and I are deeply honored to receive this award. Um, we want to take a moment to thank uh, Aragna and you Magenta for all the valuable feedback that we received during the mentor sessions. Um, we also want to thank all the fellow participants that were able to exchange feedback with us. Um, our exchanges with all of you have a great, had a great influence uh, in how we move forward with this project. 
Um, I think what excites me the most is that uh, this, the potential that this uh, product already has is, is inspiring uh, my teammate and I to want to make it have a, a really important impact. Um, we are glad that our panel of judges were able to share this same view of the potential of the project. And we now kind of receive this uh, great sense of responsibility with all of our potential users to bring the best out of this product too, and to keep moving forward uh, with the development of this product. Thank you very much. You know, I can I can sense her excitement when I even like talk to you guys about it. And that makes me excited because I'm excited for our guys and of that you basically gave them some more like uh, possibilities, you know, and when the world is impossible. So thank you guys. You've done you've done an incredible job empowering people with this device. Uh, there are so many so many people that we know directly who can um, exercise a great deal more of their own independence uh, going forward. So thank you for making it possible. All right, I've got to tell you how much fun this is to be able to um, move these projects forward and support all of your ingenuity and genius. Um, so the best in category for UCPLA. The winner is the wearable soft robotic exoskeleton gloves. Thinking about the potential that's unlocked with this particular device, not only with our folks who have contractures and um, limited, if any, use of their hands, to be able to play anything from Yahtzee to putting mustard on a hot dog um, is a Herculean uh, dream for a lot of our folks and uh, your invention is going to make it possible. In addition, people who've had strokes or who have even um, anatomic problems with, with their hands where they can't have a pincher grasp, which is so necessary um, for humans, uh, this again just unleashes uh, a, a million possibilities. So thank you again for your dedication to this project. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I just would like to thank the judges and the community for voting on us. And I, I really believe that this award will let us uh, work harder in our projects so, when, uh, so we can disseminate even better our, our projects. And um, yeah, this is a great incentive to us to keep working on it. And I hope this can help many more people. Thank you. And we hope that many people will get to replicate the design and give us feedback and make it even better. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so I can't believe we've already made it to, to the, almost the closing of our ceremony today. Um, like I said, you know, this, uh, this prize ceremony was almost a year in the making. Um, many of you have been working on these projects for the last eight months, if not more, of course. It's great to hear some of you, this, these have been long, long time um, projects that you've been, uh, you know, dedicating so much of your time to. It sounds like mostly outside of, of other commitments, which is, always really inspiring to see and, and um, a constant really in, in the Hackaday community and, and the projects you all work on. So um, I'm really excited to be able to announce our grand prize best all around awardee. Uh, and this again, this prize was across any of the nonprofit um, challenges, uh, just the really the most stand out. And, and I can say, you know, um, the, the scores this one received from the judges was, uh, you know, really they, blew them out of water compared to some of the other um, entrants. They uh, stood out across all the criteria and we're so, um, so excited to congratulate the bite for the grand prize award in $50,000. So on behalf of UCPLA and actually anyone in this world who struggles with independence, um, this particular invention literally can be used, I think by anyone um, to do anything at any time and um, talk about a key to freedom and to independence. The bite is just genius and I congratulate you so sincerely. This was my very favorite during judging and, uh, and I just hope that you can make many more of these and more iterations because uh, this above all I think will be a huge game changer for all the folks that we love and support. Thank you so much. Wow, I'm a little choked up but it's, it's a real honor uh, to have my project selected for the Hackaday Prize. And I've been reading Hackaday since the very launch. And I'm really proud to be 
you know, contributing now. Um, this year, there were so many impressive projects. I'm sure the judges had a very challenging time uh, selecting the winners. And I'm excited for the opportunity to get the bite out there in the world and help the people who will benefit. So thank you. So I want to say a huge thank you to everyone who entered the Hackaday Prize. Obviously, if we didn't have entries, we wouldn't be here. Uh, it changes the world. Showing what you're doing and showing that you spend your time working on these things is important. Thank you so much to all of the judges and all of the mentors. Like I said earlier, it's a lot of time. We really appreciate it. The talent that you had, the expertise and the willingness that you have to share it, that changes the world. Uh, one of the things that I've been thinking about a lot lately is how we come together to work on teams. And a huge part of it is just taking that first step, but then showing that early work and showing it visibly and publicly because people can't help but come together and say like, well, what is it you're working on? You know, like, what is the idea? What are you, what are you planning to accomplish? Um, and that gets the conversation going. It gets the shared ideas going. It starts to onboard skill. And uh, really that's what the Hackaday, Hackaday Prize is all about. Uh, we're lucky to have the support in this of uh, Supply Frame, who founded the Hackaday Prize all the way back in 2014 and have been making it a priority every year ever since. Uh, we're lucky to have the support in those ideas from uh, DigiKey, Microchip, and ARM, who are all uh, very sub substantive sponsors this year. We couldn't have done it without them. Thank you so much. We appreciate that you share and recognize how important it is to get people to take these first steps uh, and to be you know, working as teams. Uh, this year was particularly uh, special because it's the first year that we've been able to bring on nonprofit partners who eliminated clear, uh, sorry, who illuminated clear needs. Uh, and that really jumpstarts imagination and having them on the call to hear from them. It's obvious the role uh, that people develop in these projects are playing in uh, opportunities for people in the world. And that is incredibly important the seed idea and the openness to share the story of what you've chosen to do with your time and how others might be able to add to that cause and add their own ideas. These are the levers that change the world. No great idea ever came out fully baked. And of course, you can't have any substantive success without having a very healthy dose of failure along the way. Um, it's the first step that matters and it's the inclusion of others wherever they can be found and however they can be uh, put into helping the effort that keep things moving ahead when one person tires. And it's the person that takes the first step. Be that person. It's the people who carry the load. Be those people. And together we will move worlds. Thank you for your inspiration this year. Thank you for the difference that you make in the world. And thank you for the 2020 Hackaday Prize. Thank you again to everyone and to our amazing partners and to you all for the spirit of innovation and, and creativity that you bring each year.